Okay, so hopefully you can see my lovely set of axes there, and that should give away what we're doing next. We're going to be talking about graphs. So, this is the y-axis, up and down, and this is the x-axis. A student of mine actually gave me a very good tip, which I'd never heard, and I thought was great, on learning which one the x-axis is. And the tip is just that x is across. X is across. And x literally is a cross. So, uh, quite good for remembering which one is which. And trust me, my entire career as a student, I could never remember which was which. So that was a great piece of advice. Right, so graphs. Now, generally, to start with, we'll be dealing with straight line graphs. A straight line graph is any graph that is of the form that the equation of the graph will be y equals mx plus c. Hopefully you've seen that before. If not, y obviously is just whatever the y value will be. The m is what we call the gradient, is the slope of the line. So m equals the gradient, which is sort of the slope, basically, how steep the slope is. The bigger the number, the steeper the slope. C is what we call the y-axis intercept, bit of a poncy name for where the line crosses the y. So where we cross y. And that's it. So let's have a look at some example graphs. I'll draw them one in some nice fancy colours. So keeping this in mind, what do we think this graph would be? Okay, so I have my lovely straight line. What is that? Well, not absolutely that difficult, this one. First thing to look at, straight away, y-intercept. It's zero, so we don't even need to worry about that. We just need to work out what the gradient might be. And what is the gradient? So we go along one, and we go up one. That's how we calculate the gradient by how many we go along for how many we go up, okay? It's the difference in the y value, so it's y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Should, whoop, that looks like a square, let's move that, x2 minus x1. Essentially, let's, you choose two points. So here's a point here, one, one, and here's a point here. Trust me, that point is 6, 6, that point is 1, 1. So, difference in, so let's, difference in y, the difference in the two y values. So the difference is 5. This is, this point is our um, x2, y2, and this is our x1, y1. We always write the x coordinate first. We always go along and then up. So, our y2 value, in this case, is 6. Our y1 value is 1. And exactly the same for our x's. So basically it just equals 5 over 5, which equals 1. So our gradient for this equation, for this line even, is 1. So we've got, let's stick with the red actually, we've got y equals 1x. What do we say when we say 1x? We just say x. So we've got y equals x plus or 0. So that's just y equals x. It's still the form y equals mx plus c. It's just there is m is 1 and c is 0. Okay, let's look at another graph. Let's get rid of this working here. Okay, let's look at another graph. This time, we're going to look at 
this graph, which I'm going to elegantly draw. Okay, so let's take a look at it. First off, what's the intercept? Where's it crossing that y axis? It's crossing at 3. Nice and easy. So we know it's going to be. We know it's going to be something like y equals something x plus 3. We just need to work out what that something is. So again, we need to work out the gradient. Remember, our gradient is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We can see that this is shallower than this one. As it's shallower, we expect the number to be smaller than 1. So we're kind of expecting to get a fraction here. Always check that. If it's really steep, you're expecting a big number above one, so like a 4 or 5 or 2 even, whatever. If it's shallow, it's going to be smaller than 1. It's going to be, it's going to be a fraction. Also, we notice it's going the opposite way. This one is going in this direction, this one sloping in this direction. That tells us it's probably going to be a negative number as well. So let's have a look. Let's see what our gradient tells us. If our gradient comes out not negative and not less than 1, we know we've made a mistake somewhere. So let's take two points. Why don't we take here and here? So, our difference, okay, so this, is, this is our x1, y1, and this is our x2, y2. Okay, so, remember, for the gradient, it's y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So, what's y2, first off? Y2 is 0. So our y value here is 0. What's our y value here? It's 3. So 0 minus 3. Okay, what about our x values? What's our x2? Our x2 is 8. Okay, and what's our x2 value here? x1 value? Our x1 value is 0. So what does that tell us? 0 minus 3 is minus 3. 8 minus 0 is 8. So we actually get the gradient is minus 3 eighths. So that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted something that was less than 1. Minus 3 eighths, definitely less than 1. And we wanted something that was negative. So the equation of that line is minus 3 over 8 x plus 3. And that's how we work out the equation of a line. Just y equals mx plus c. Let's look at another one or two examples that I can fit on here. Right, let's look at a completely flat line. What about this line here? Really easy. What's the gradient? Well, is it increasing? Is the x value increasing as the y value increases? No, everything is just, the x value is increasing, the y value is staying exactly the same. So it's going to be 0 for our y2, y1. So we get 0 divided by something. 0 divided by something is always 0. So m, in this case, is 0, which makes this whole thing 0. So this is going to be y. This pen's rather enough, so I'm going to switch to another pen. So this would just be y equals 0 for the equation. We don't even bother writing that in. So we just got our c. So plus C, so minus 4, plus minus 4, minus 4. So that's just y equals minus 4. So any straight line going like that is just going to be y equals minus 4. Okay, so very straightforward. That is how you work out the equation of a line. Also in there you've got how to work out the gradient. You've got the intercepts. You've got basically just recognising graphs. So what you need to do now, you need to go away and practice all the questions for this and we'll then come back and we'll have a look at how to find this value, how to find where two graphs cross each other. So have a go at those questions and then we'll move on to the next step.